Good evening, everyone. Before we start the meeting, I would ask Madam City Clerk to read to us the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. What is Christmas? It is tenderness for the past, courage for the present, and hope for the future. Thank you, uh, Mr. Richards. Call the 18th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clyunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Amber Hasselt? Excuse. 15 present. Before we uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance and pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in, I would like to say that I am going to ask Attorney McLean and Susan Richards to lead us. It is my understanding that the city attorney nor the city clerk have ever led the council in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance during a common council meeting. So as we finish this year off, I thought it was very appropriate to have these two uh, wonderful professional individuals lead us. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Attorney McLean, Madam City Clerk, President Burke. Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor, I ask that we would dispense with the uh, uh, reading of the minutes and approve them as entered on the record. Second. Motion second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Dan Dawn to be considered for the Board of Contractors Examiners to fill the unexpired term of Gerald Yachman, which expires April 30, 2008. Dan Dawn will join the committee as an alternate. Craig Sider will move from alternate to full member. Signed by the Mayor. On the back of your sheet and your file is a brief resume of Mr. Dawn, and I would ask for a motion to suspend because he should have been approved the last time. There was a misunderstanding. Uh, so if someone would make a There's a motion. Is there a second to suspend? Any ob objection? There being none, is there a motion to approve the appointment? So moved. Second. Motion second to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Alderperson Mark Hanna to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee as an additional alderperson at large with a term expiring 4-1707, signed by the mayor. Once again, I'd ask for suspension. This is a very uh, critical appointment that is being made now because of our union negotiations. Hello. Motion and second to suspend. Is there any objection? There being none, is there a motion to approve the appointment? So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve. Any discussion on the appointment? <coughs> There being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. And all the person Renee Susha and Vicki Meyer to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired terms of all the persons Eldon Berg and Mark Hanna, whose terms expire 43007. These appointments are necessary to have the necessary representation from the Salary and Grievances Committee and the Risk Management Committee as called for by the resolution establishing the committee. Signed by the Mayor. And these two laid over. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. A move. Sec second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Attorney McLean. Public forum. Uh, City Clerk. Yes, thank you. Um, first on the list would be Carl Table. Mr. Table, could you give me your home address, please? Gladly, Sue. Uh, 2402 North 25th, here in the city of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, City Clerk, City Attorney, members of the City Council, and our Sheboygan citizens, I'd like to pay tribute to two individuals this evening who have left city employment but have left a wonderful mark of service. And it would be nice if those of you on the council and in the community would also give them a phone call or a note of thanks. First of all, Peter Fullerton. 
Peter was Deputy Director of Planning and Development. He, in his quiet ways, did many, many faithful tasks for our city. The second person I'd like to pay tribute to is Tom Holton. The comment has made we can all be replaced. I don't feel Tom Holton can be replaced. I remember when our city was hit by the flood. Tom Holton was there day, night, weekends. And ladies and gentlemen, he supervised all the prisoners who helped the neighbors in their basements full of water. Please be sure that we all say a special tribute and thank you to Tom Holton. This evening, there are three groups within our city that I'd like to say a special thank you as a citizen. Uh, first of all, to Chief Kirk and the police department. Uh, during the year, I was not able to join you at your rallies at City Hall and give you 100% support. I'd like to tonight say to the police department, thank you for keeping our city safe. You don't know where you're going to be called next and when your phone call, when the next phone call comes. But as one citizen, thank you very much. The second group I'd like to pay tribute to is the Mead Public Library, Mead Public Library Board, who during the year have received much unfair criticism. All members of the board did not comment. They held their heads high and they did their duties. And also, it'd be nice if you would say thank you to the Mead Public Board. And the last group this evening is the Public Works Union members. They are the people who do the many fine things that keep our city clean. They are the people who have those very positive billboards and radio ads about the service that they give. And so my hat is also a tribute to the Public Works City Union. I have one request of an item of action that I'm going to leave a letter with my two aldermen, Vicki Meyer and Mark Hanna. I believe that this is the people's house, and I pe believe people should be elected to this body, not appointed. Last year, thanks to Representative Akron, Ben Akron and Joe Lipham, the law was changed that we now could have elections. It's too bad that the state had to say you can have it, Sheboygan. Okay, we can have elections, but I'm going to ask you as a council to adopt a resolution asking the legislature and the governor to say, and we'll add an addendum that Sheboygan have an election when they want it. I believe that if somebody resigns or their Lord calls somebody home, you should be have an election then. And give people the chance to campaign. Like many of you are going to either seek re-election or many are seeking election to your positions. And last but not least, I'd like to uh, give a little gift to this fine city of Sheboygan. Uh, first of all, this evening I gave Silas a little envelope with some uh, bicentennial pins. Uh, years ago, Sheboygan was the first bicentennial community in Sh Wisconsin. And I came across some pins. And sometime at one of your meetings, Silas will give the mayor and the city officials and you members of the council a bicentennial pin. Uh, some of you might know and some of you maybe don't know, but over the years I have collected political history memorabilia. And the time has come to sell, donate, and give, and to share. And so, Mayor Perez, this evening I would like to present a little gift to the city of Sheboygan that I would like preserved in City Hall. This is not to be sold, not to be given away, but to be preserved at City Hall until the end of time. It, it has, from Mayor Perez going back, to a button from in the 40s when Mayor Sonnenberg was elected. And I felt this was the appropriate place to give. So Mayor Perez, would you please accept this on behalf of the city? And you good city people will have, find a place where it's very appropriate. Thank you, Carol. I'd like to note, Mayor Perez, that yours was the most colorful button. I like the red, white, and blue. Uh, but it's, it's part of America, um, uh, Sheboygan history. Uh, to all of you, a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and thank you. Thank you, Carl. Excuse me. Yes. Dr. Temple, on behalf of the city of Sheboygan, I accept your wonderful gift, and we are honored to, to accept it. Thank you, sir. Okay. 
Uh, yes, next on the list would be um, Rich Jordan. And Mr. Jordan, can you give me your home address, please? Sorry, I'm at 1616 Black Walnut in Sheboygan. Thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Perez, Attorney McLean, Clerk Richards, and the council members. I was in the midst of preparing my presentation for tonight when I came across the December 17th Sheboygan Press editorial entitled, Does the Edison Fit the South Pier District? And the press editorial asks several related questions and takes a balanced middle-of-the-road approach to the USS Edison project. There are many open-ended questions that must be answered satisfactorily before any concrete activities, such as modifying the pier, dredging the harbor, or towing the destroyer will take place. Last week, Mr. Source, Winces Museum director, spent over an hour and a half fielding questions from you about the project. Much of what he shared with you were approaches that can be taken to find answers. The council is to be complimented for its thorough examination of so many different aspects of a complex project. Many of the questions do not have answers that can be arrived at by debate. There will have to be studies and consultations that address the subjects such as parking, dredging, financing, operations, and development. Winsett does not have an easy job ahead. Their application with the Department of the Navy will have to demonstrate a deep commitment to serving the ship in a multitude of aspects. The Edson is the Navy's ship. Until the Navy is satisfied that Winsa can perform, there will be no approval. The contingent lease before you tonight is a document well prepared to protect the city of Sheboygan from financial and legal liabilities. The cooperation of the city and Winsa will result in a successful and valuable project. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Next on the list would be Terry Van Akron. Terry, can you give me your home address, please? 1719 North 13th for a couple of weeks yet. And you'll have five painting. minutes, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, Steve McLean, it's city attorney, city clerk, Susan Richards, all the aldermen, glad to be here tonight and good to see you all. Happy holidays before I forget to you and everybody that's listening tonight. It's great to be here again tonight, uh, see so many old friends, and I don't mean that as old in age as, as I do as, as friends that, I, that I've served with here. It's good to see Carl Table, maybe it's old uh, Alderman return night tonight. Uh, but I'd like to speak on, on the uh, naval ship in the Edson uh, this evening. But before we start, it also was hard to sit back there when, when it was asked, should we suspend the rules? I almost jumped up and said no, because I used to do that on a regular basis. Um, so. Tonight I'm here to speak um, as State Representative Terry Van Akron first, saying that I too met with the Wisconsin Naval Sip Ship Association uh, in Madison with some of the governor staff and people from the tourism department, and we were, we were given the project, uh, shown the project um, as it currently is, and we're impressed with the project. Just like you uh, are, we also are encouraged by the project for tourism, but yet weren't, aren't in a place where we can contribute state dollars to bringing the ship here, but are willing to work with the people once the ship is here and provide grants and tourism dollars. If the ship was brought to Sheboygan, then we would prevent, present money uh, to help promote the ship as we do the ship in Manitowoc and other tourist uh, promotions throughout the state. Uh, so we have met with the group the tourist secretary um, is in favor of uh, this type of development and this type of, of tourism for Wisconsin. Now, as a personal citizen I, and, and a past alderman, I would ask you to please consider adopting this resolution tonight just because it is something that you're moving forward. When I looked at the agreement, there's many hoops and many hurdles that still have to be done. But what you're doing is giving them the opportunity to go forward and prove to you that they can work with the Navy and obtain the ship, prove to you that they can raise the money uh, to do this, 
prove to you that they can get the Corps of Engineers. Now, if they get the Corps of Engineers to come and do the dredging, they're a better, better person than I am for the many years that we tried to get dredging in, this, uh, in the harbor and things done. But have them, and, and what they're asking you to do is to approve, to allow them to come f back to you and prove that they can do all the things that you've put in that agreement to hap have happen. And if all those things fall in place, uh, then I think you're going to have a worthwhile project. So I commend you on, on the way you put together your agreement with them, um, and I hope that this passes tonight and then we can go forward with it. Thank you for the, your time, and again, happy holidays to everybody here and everybody in Sheboygan. Thank you, Terry. And last would be Andrew Bauman. <laughs> And Andrew, can I have your home address, please? Uh, of course. It's 2228 Lakeshore Drive. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. Very good. Uh, hello and good evening. I'm here to also speak about the ship that's been mentioned twice already. Uh, I would like to say overall I'm not an opponent to this type of project or development, but I would like to point out a few reservations that I have as a citizen of this community that uses the waterfront quite regularly. Um, for me, as a long-term resident of Sheboygan, the South Pier position that has been kind of the front-runner berthing spot of the Edson is unacceptable. And I would just like to state three reasons uh, for my view and others that I've spoken with. One is the loss of lake view. When Blue Harbor went up, we lost a tremendous view from downtown Sheboygan and from other venue points of Sheboygan. With these condos coming in, they are going to look at two options currently, right now the lake or at Blue Harbor. With the ship there, it's going to be the ship or Blue Harbor. Right now the gap between where you can view the lake is from the Coast Guard station to the corner of Blue Harbor, and that is exactly where the Edson is proposed to sit. Uh, community use of the pier is something that is a tradition of Sheboygan, from the fishing to people camping out to just people taking walks on the South Pier in their, our nice summer evenings. And what worries me most is not the loss of access to fishermen or things like that, but the loss of that parking area. When I was a kid, we'd bike down to the pier and hang out in that gravel lot and meet people that would come from all over this region of the country, from Illinois, Iowa, even Pennsylvania, and set up their RVs and spend their time fishing at the pier. Well, that's gone. And now there's this small circle where uh, fishermen can, and, and citizens can park and access the pier. If the ship's there, and if you use the group's numbers, which I have some questions about, but I'll take their word for them. I've been in contact with them, and they seem very professional and very... Uh, very on the ball with the whole issue, is 80,000 people. That comes to 220 people a day. That means that in the winter months, when obviously not that, that large number of people are going to be visiting the ship, there will be close to 1,000 people, if not more, during the weekdays and weekends during the summer. There is no way that we can accommodate that many people within that parking circle. And I've spoken with one of the members today, actually, and he told me that they have no desire to try to use that parking circle. But the one thing we can't change is human nature. And if people are going to try to view the ship, tour the ship, they're going to park as close as possible uh, to it. And I could see it, the fishermen now having to use the Blue Harbor parking lot and having to carry their gear where before, which is much further west, than instead of being able to use the parking at the foot of the pier. The third issue and this is a personal one for me, is the loss of water sports in that area. One goal of the design guidelines of the South Pier District, and this is a quote from that goal, is to promote development encouraging water-related uses. That area, just directly south of the South Pier, is one of the best areas for surfing, windsurfing, and kiteboarding on this side of the lake. There's days this year that we've had over 40 people, surfers, windsurfers, and kiteboarding, using that. And this is a direct goal of the South Pier development. And you put that ship there, change 
both it's going to create a wind shadow will that eliminate all of those type of activities and it will change the surf break which all the surfers use and Sheboygan not just regionally but nationally is really kind of gaining a reputation for itself for surfing and these type of water sports we commonly have anywhere between 10 to 15 people from Chicago Madison Milwaukee coming up here during the summer months to use our, our beach, especially that South Beach area. Because I still think the Edson would be a good addition, and I've sailed for U.S. Steel on the Great Lakes fleet, and I've commercial fished up in Alaska during my summers to pay for my college, I think it still has a valuable place here in Sheboygan. And I really think we need to explore putting it up in the river where development has already taken place, not put it out into our lake, our best resource. Where I suggest putting it would be across from Rotary Park in front of the Blue Harbor for a couple of reasons. One, it won't block the view of the lake. We already are, all it will block is the view of Blue Harbor, okay? The Blue Harbor's already taken care of the lake. We don't even worry about that. It'll be close to the shops and the walkways. Excuse me, Andrew, would you it, like an additional minute to finish up? I would appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It'll be close to the shops and the walkway. And if you look at the original planning of the South Pier District area, that is where they have proposed ship docking, the cruise ship docking area. Uh, I've, like I said, I've sailed on the Great Lakes, and I'm familiar with the cruise ship industry on the Great Lakes, and it is rather small, but it is, it is a component of Great Lakes shipping. And I want to just leave with this question. Does the redevelopment committee and the planning committee for the South Pier District really have an understanding of how the water uses the waterways of the community and the beaches are used by Sheboygan citizens. Uh, I, last time I spoke here was on the dog beach and they were going to put the dog beach in one of the heavily used areas of our beach. And, and many people were not aware of the traffic at the beach that they were going to put the dog beach at. And I just think that is a crucial question we need to ask ourselves. Are we making our decisions based on the best information available or are we just making decisions based on what would be an easy fix. Excuse so me. thank you. Right on time. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everyone, for addressing the council, those that did. Before I make my comments, I'd like to make a presentation. This is one of the things that the mayor gets to do that really gives me a really good, warm feeling. And I know it does uh, for you, Alderman, also. And it's one that deals with uh, recognizing an individual that has worked for the city of Sheboygan for 28 years and has chosen to retire and move on and enjoy life in another, in another way. Um, Sheboygan is full, I say the city of Sheboygan is full of wonderful, hardworking employees that have committed a lot of their lifetime to us, to public service, and we truly appreciate that. One such person is June Olson, and I'd ask for her to step up. Okay, Chief, thank you very much, Deputy Chief. This is presented to June for the faithful and dedicated service to the Sheboygan Fire Department from 1978 to 2006, June Olson. Thank you again for wonderful work that you did for us and we wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank you. I would just like to add that June has had the opportunity over many years to train eight of Sheboygan's 15 fire chiefs. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be the last one. And she's uh, had a great contribution to our community and our fire department, and uh, her retirement is very well deserved. So we're, we're very thankful to have had her, and we wish her the best for a long, happy, and healthy retirement. Thank you. Thank you, June. Thank you, Chief, Deputy Chief. As 
we close down the year. This will be our last common council, regular common council meeting of the year. And I thought it would be appropriate to just reflect a little bit and, and touch on some of the accomplishments that we've made as a council. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to think of all the wonderful things and the good things that we do for our community when we really truly are very busy and a lot of things just whiz by and we really don't have time to capture those images of our accomplishments and enjoy them. If you look back, and some of these uh, have been uh, mentioned, is our economic development. We have accomplished an extraordinary job in economic development. We have wonderful people that has helped, have helped tremendously. Paulette Andrews with her leadership in city development. Tom Holton as public, engine, uh, public works director and city engineer. And the rest of the people that have uh, contributed. But if you look at Sheboygan, closely you will see that Sheboygan is changing and it's changing for the better. It's progressing which is what every city should do but it's doing so in a manner that we're able to maintain our good old-fashioned hometown flavor and I think that's important to to remember. You look at the Blue Harbor that thing is a monumental task and one that's been recognized nationally. Blue Harbor all the uh, development that have gone there, that has, that has uh, occurred there. We got the green warehouse building. At times, people thought that thing will never get developed. Well, it is. The uh, Optenberg building, uh, at, thought, at time people thought that thing's going to be there for another 50 years. It's not. It's coming down. We've got the Highland restaurant. We've got the capsule building being done. We've got that courtyard that's been done. We've got uh, the rice building. We've got a tremendous amount of economic development that's going to add to our tax base that in turn will provide some of the badly needed tax relief for our citizens. And I hope that this will, uh, will be looked at favorably uh, at, the, at the state level when, when we deal with that. The other thing that I want to mention briefly is the uh, the amount of street repair and reconstruction that we accomplished this year also. As you know, 8th Street was finally finished. That project had been on schedule for year after year after year after year. And this council got it done. It's complete. The whole 8th Street has been done. Complete reconstruction. Street repairs, we've put together a five-year um, plan to aggressively uh, deal with our uh, decaying streets, the potholes, People don't like potholes and they don't like their streets to go bad. You will see Union Avenue, you'll see a lot of streets that have been done. Taylor, Taylor Drive, for example, was, was a huge, huge uh, project that was accomplished. And that speaks a lot for the city of Sheboygan and the common council that directs the city of Sheboygan. You also note, uh, little has been said, but at the end of this year, no more will tax. It's done. You've responded to the people, that'll save the taxpayer a lot of money also. Stormwater tax, not a lot has been said about that. And we will have to find alternative means of financing some of our projects, but you dealt with that head on and you responded and acted in the way that people were expecting us to act. That's gonna save the taxpayer a lot of money. The police station, for years, councils and mayors have struggled and struggled to get a police station built. And folks, I used to say, if I have to go nail the thing myself, it's going to get built. Now I can really say, I think all 16 of you are, are going to go help me nail that thing because I think we're going to get it done. Zero percent increase in the levy, practically unheard of. There's no other political entity that passed a budget with a zero percent increase in the levy. You did. You responded again to the people. $1.8 million that would have been added to our levy wasn't. You saved the taxpayer a lot of money again. There's a new sense of pride in Sheboygan. I don't know if you feel it. I'm certain that you do, but I feel it. I go out into the community and people are starting to take notice of the good things that are happening. And not necessarily just take notice, but stop, start talking about it. And I get calls of new ideas frequently. That tells me that people are taking notice and want to be involved and want to contribute in their own way in making Sheboygan a better and much better place to live. As I, as, before I speak on the um, 207 uh, thoughts that I wanted to share with you, 
I wanted to read a statement that I read today that deals with the findings of the district attorney in the matter involving um, Alderman Groff and in some respects myself. It was a matter that was hurtful to Alderman Groff, myself, Alderman Susha, and all our city employees, hurtful to my family. And folks, it was hurtful for the entire city of Sheboygan. While I am not pleased with the, while I am very pleased with the finding of no wrongdoing, I am not pleased with the way I have been treated, the way aldermen have been treated, the way our employees have been treated. Furthermore, I am not pleased with the needless waste of taxpayer money spent in this case. Also, I am not pleased with the personal stabs by the district attorney taken at Alderman Susha and Attorney McLean. Attorney McLean is a wonderful, wonderful, very competent city attorney. And Alderman Susha, people may not agree with you, but you're a good alderman. And those things should have never been said. As you know, this whole investigation was initiated pursuant to a complaint filed by Susan Hunley. As I read the transcript today, it is clear to me that this unfortunate and unnecessary investigation was based on speculation, gossip, hearsay, and the distortion and manipulation of information. The district attorney may portray Susan Hunley as a responsible citizen in his findings. But I'm going to let the people at Sheboygan be the judge of that. For two years, my political enemies have tried to discredit my good work and me. I have been personally and professionally attacked. In my mind, this is just another failed attempt. This is another example of dirty politics. I feel for Alderman Susha and Alderman Groff. They deserve better. I feel for Ms. Yolanda Groff. All she did was apply for a job and qualified for it. That is all she did. Her integrity and dignity was put in question. She too deserved better. This whole matter has been a crying shame and I believe some people owe us an apology. My thoughts for 07 Council challenges. Alderman, our budget's not going to go away. Coming back next year, we're going to have an increase in expenditures, no revenues. We're going to have to start getting creative. A little tough. But my position next year will be to start thinking in terms of how do we maintain or even improve the quality and the level of services that we provide as citizens. And they expect it and deserve it and pay for it. And somehow, all of us together as a team <coughs> will find a solution, will find the answer, and deliver. And people will be pleased. I am glad that uh, Mr. Representative Terry Van Akron was here because one of the things that I plan to do in 07 is to work extremely hard, actually bug you a lot <laughs> with legislators. Because there are a lot of things out there that we need to deal with that I believe our legislators can be of great help to us. There's some statutes out there that are outdated that may need a little bit of tweaking. And there's some things out there that if our legislature expects us to be fiscally prudent, they need to provide the tools for us with which to do it with. We can't do a $100 job with $50. We need help. We don't operate in a vacuum. What Sheboygan does, what the city does, what we do, is only a little bit of the picture. There's a whole array of things happening. The dynamics is they're never ending. I believe I will have support as we continue our economic development. We're working hard. Paulette Andrews is doing a tremendous job. And the development continues. As you know also, or may not know, the Redevelopment Authority approved a six, about a $6 million project to go in South Pier. That'll, that's going to help our tax pay and in turn help our taxpayers. It's a 70-unit uh, um, 
a hotel type of business that will create about 15 jobs and generate a lot of uh, activity down there and bring people to Blue Harbor. I will continue to work with the aggressive plan that we have put together for street repairs, but one in particular I think that should be noted, and that is the intersection of Fifth and New York. That's where the built, county building administration is. If you look, if you can imagine that intersection, it's like a cup. So when it rains, all the water goes down that small drain and it can't handle it. So it goes up and it goes into people's basements, people's living room. I was up there twice in the last two years, last year and a half. And folks, if that was my house, I'd be upset too. So we have taken the initiative to improve that and it will be several million dollars, but it will be capitalized, some money borrowed. And we're gonna fix that fifth and New York intersection and we're gonna clean it all the way up to the river, repair the, uh, in increase the, uh, the size of the, 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 the uh, sewer, sewer lines and it should re uh, give the people a relief that they need and they should not have that same problem again. Taylor Heights area, Paulette Andrews and I will continue to work there to work with consultants so that we can try to figure out what we're going to do with that area. It's a very important area to the city of Sheboygan and it should not be left alone without some assistance from the city. Uh, Paulette has some great ideas. We will sit together during the next year and try to work hard to give that area an uplift so that people can return to that area and open up a business and start patronizing those businesses. Those businesses are very important to us, too. We cannot forget that. The river development will continue. What I envision is that one, now that we've made that jump across the bridge, which is probably the most difficult thing to do, but the jump was made, it's been made, Highland, the Highland House restaurant, the Kepsel building, and I hope that we can continue to work the development all the way down the river up to Kiwanis Park. It'll be a tremendous project, but it's doable and I know that I will have your cooperation to do that. It's aggressive, but it's doable. And three more things, and then we'll get going with business. And all these things that are happening, and as the mayor goes out into the community and mingles with people and talks to people, one of the things that I did uh, about two weeks ago is I had the opportunity to go say hi to a group, a large group, probably about 300 people of wonderful most fun having ladies I've ever met in my life, the Red Hat Society. They were at Blue Harbor. And I had a blast. I've never seen so many people that laugh and smile at one time and have a great time. And I was so touched by that. They even made me an honorary member. How that? <laughs> so <laughs> to Mr. William and Eunice Berg, I thank them because they're the ones that organized that and did an incredible job. A couple of more things. One is, come New Year, I have had some small complaints, but nonetheless complaints about some aldermen having back problems and having problems with back aches because of chairs. These chairs are old, and they're not very comfortable. So we looked around, shopped around, and the, the finance committee did approve the purchase of 16 chairs for you, each one of you, and three for us. It didn't cost a lot of money, and I'm going to say how much it cost because somebody may try to make an issue of this, and it was about $2,800, okay? For the work that you do, the money, very little money that you get paid, and the amount of time you spend in those chairs, because lately it's been about two hours per meeting, and it may be today because I'm talking too much, you need to at least have a comfortable chair to sit in. All of them, you deserve that. So I hope you will enjoy your new chair. And then finally, my last words. I want to wish every one of you, your family, your friends and neighbors, a happy Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you. President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Perez. Uh, Mayor, I thought these chairs were designed to be uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> I would move to accept and file all the ROs, uh, accept and adopt all the RCs, and place all the general ordinance upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There be a none, please call the roll. Burke? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 
and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1818 through 1819 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1820, 18 through 1821 lies over. 1822 through 1829 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 1830 by Alderman Berg, authorizing entering, entering into a sister city partnership between the city of Sheboygan and the city of Subami, Japan. President Berg. Oh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be placed upon its passage. Second. Motion second to put 1830 upon its passage. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1831 by Alderman Berg, amending the comp composition of the Group Health Insurance mm -hmm. Committee so as to add an additional older person. President Berg. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would also move that this uh, resolution be placed upon its passage. Second. Motion to second to put 1831 upon its passage. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1832 by Alderman Vanderweel, authorizing the mayor to execute the joint powers agreement for, city, for Sheboygan County and City of Sheboygan 911 emergency systems. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd uh, make a motion to suspend the rules. Do you need to suspend the rules? Mm -hmm. and is there any objection to suspension? If there be none, please proceed. Then I will uh, ask to put the resolution upon this passage. Second. Motion and second. Put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, the reason why I uh, asked to suspend the rules is because we need to submit this to the state by January 1st. And this is something that we have done every year. And the agreement is no different than other years. And it's a mutual agreement required by the state when we have 911 systems so that we can assist the county and they can assist us. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Minerville. Any other? There being none, please call the roll. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clyunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1833 by Alderman Graf. Hannah. Hannah, I'm sorry. Hannah. Clayunas, Susha. And Boren. Authorizing disbursement of the city of Sheboygan's 2006 community development block grant funds for the 24th entitlement period to various recipients to promote economic development, create jobs, aid minority groups, develop and upgrade housing, and assist low and moderate income people. Home Inc. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Put 1833 upon its passage. Any discussion? Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. It, it's always a very nice time when we're dispersing the money for the block grants. And um, I see there's a, a therefore resolved about home income, but as soon as the legal documents are in order for the funds, then that will be dispersed also. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, anything else? Please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Yes, Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Abstain. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries. 1834 by Alderman Grau, Hannah, Clayuna, Susha, and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Grau. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would ask for a suspension of the rules, please. Motion second. Any objection? There being none, please proceed. Then, Your Honor, I would move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion second. Put resolution 1833 upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this is for two items. One is a, um, the CAD GIS upgrade that, and that is needed. Um, as soon as we can get it in the other, the $500,000 is for... Um, for the, mall, um, the Walmart area uh, for road improvements. We'll pay about uh, half a million dollars and then um, 
Walmart will reimburse the city approximately $300,000 for this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1835 by Alderman Boren, Berg, Serta, Davis, Hannah, Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Ryan, and Vanderweel authorizing entering into an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Wisconsin Naval Ship Association Incorporated for berthing of the USS Etson in the Sheboygan Harbor. Alderman Boren. You're, you're first in the name. I'll, I'll call him Alderman Hannah. That's okay. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that we put upon a uh, resolution for passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1835 upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to uh, make a motion to amend the Windsor Agreement as follows. I believe you all should have a copy of this. I pass it up before the meeting. Uh, in section two, which is on page two of the agreement, uh, we want to add in there, uh, Winsa agrees to pay to the city annually after the second full year of operation on or before May 1, the amount of $5,000 is rent. Set rent shall be adjusted annually for an amount equal to the annual percentage change in the city's tax levy for that year. The second change would be on, uh, would also be on uh, page two, the uh, second sentence, uh, where we want to just simply add the word additional, so it would read additional rent and amount equivalent, and you can read the rest for the parking assessment. The third change would be on page five, and we want to add after D uh, a new part under 4E, submission of evidence acceptable to the city that Winsa has funds escrow or a bond in place sufficient to cover the cost of removing the USS Hudson from, from the Sheboygan River and Harbor at no cost to the city, county, state, or federal governments. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Motion. There's a second to that motion. Any other discussion? All on the on the on the not on the amendment on the amendment. Then we will call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I talked to the Winsa representative before the meeting and pointed out these additions to the uh, to the agreement. And uh, if I could use a ship acronym, he's on board with it. <laughs> no, no problem. So I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. No pun, no pun intended, right? Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries on the amendment. Now we're going to need a motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion to second to approve as amended. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think that since the Committee of the Whole meeting last week, I think there were two new developments that might change uh, the position of some of the elder people tonight. Um, the first announcement that came out over the weekend was that there is the potential for a 70-room hotel at the east end of the South Pier. If you put another hotel down there, you're going to have to guarantee 70 parking spots for that hotel. Can you imagine if, you, if you're a long-term stay at this new hotel and you come back to your hotel day after day after long days of work and you're told that you have to park half a mile away in a remote parking lot because there are people that are parking there to go visit the Edson? Um, we've talked a little bit about parking, and that issue really hasn't been addressed. Um, the best answer I heard is that at the taxpayer's expense, the taxpayers will build a multi-million dollar parking structure. 
And I just don't think that's how the citizens of Sheboygan want their tax dollars spent. They don't need to put a parking structure at the end of South Pier to accommodate a large boat. The second uh, major development is um, communications that I'm sure all of us received uh, from the Sheboygan Development Corp. That's the group that is working diligently at making the Spaceport Sheboygan a reality. And it clearly states in their letter that we view this project, meaning the Edson, as a clear threat to the success of our Great Lakes Aerospace Science and Education Center at Spaceport Sheboygan. I think that the aldermen need to ask themselves what is going to benefit this community more, utilizing the armory for something very unique, a spaceport, something that isn't anywhere found in the Midwest, or should we put our eggs in the basket of the Edson, something that you can just go up to Manitowoc and you can see a, another boat. It might be a submarine, but for those of us that aren't really into boating, the point is, is that that isn't very unique. Putting a boat here isn't going to necessarily draw the people and the repeat customers. You know, once you've seen it, you've seen it. You know, think about even the local school children. Once you've seen the Edson, you've seen it. Do you need to go see it again? Whereas I think the uh, science and educational center that the Spaceport Sheboygan is going to provide, it just has so much more potential and so much more educational value for not only the citizens, but also for uh, people who would be traveling here. I mean, it could be a destination, I think, for busloads of school children from all over the Midwest. And there again, you'll be filling the rooms at Blue Harbor, um, which, which would be a great thing. But uh, I think with these new developments, uh, the aldermen just have to ask themselves, what do you want here more, the Edson or the spaceport? Because I'll tell you right now, it doesn't look like we can have both. And these folks uh, for the spaceport, we've committed to them first. They've raised almost 25% of the money that they need. They've raised about $4 million. What are you telling these folks? Well, thanks for taking the armory off our hand, but now we're not going to hold up our end of the deal, and we're going to jeopardize the whole project by bringing a boat in. I don't think that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Davis. Uh, Honorable Mayor, despite supporting uh, uh, the, or, uh, the motion bringing this in front of uh, also last week. I'm going to be, uh, I'm changing my vote tonight. Uh, I have doubts last week and I do not believe that Wednesday has the resources nor the monies to bring that uh, project to fruition out here out in the harbor and, and complete it in a reasonable amount of time. And reasonable amount of time to me is during my lifetime and I don't think it's going to be done in the next several years. I Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this has been presented to us this evening as the spaceport or the ship. Uh, I honestly believe that uh, both of these projects can come to fruition together. Um, the Sheboygan Development Corporation, which is a, a, a fine group of people, view this ship as competition for fundraising dollars is, is basically the way I am interpreting uh, this this evening. I believe that both the Windsor Project and the Spaceport Development can both work together and both be assets to this city. Going back to the parking issue, um, it's easily resolved without building a multi-million dollar parking structure. As things progress, uh, right now we have uh, several roadways down in the Blue Harbor District. We have a couple of main roadways and several, several sub-roadways, which could be changed into one ways with diagonal parking without uh, threatening uh, uh, the overall flow of traffic in the area. There's, there's, you know, parking is an easy issue to resolve without putting up a multi-million dollar parking structure, Your Honor. Um, what we're asking is that we give the winds of people the opportunity to bring this to fruition. There are a lot of stumbling blocks that will be run across. All, all they're asking is for the opportunity. They're not asking for any money from the city. Uh, we have a resolution, uh, an amendment this evening that they uh, uh, pay a $5,000 five, $5, a year rent to the city. What are we providing them with? We're providing them with a space in our harbor. We're not providing them with uh, any city dollars. So basically, uh, you know, this is, is, and it, this is not only a, a tourist attraction, 
that can bring more dollars into our community, that can support the many businesses that have invested heavily in the South Pier District, um, along with uh, another resolution coming up, another uh, local uh, entity that is investing another $1.2 million in a building on the South Pier District. We have to support these people in any way we can. Um, the South Pier District is, is basically, it's, the Edson is another piece of the puzzle. You know, right now we've got, uh, you know, if we, you, you take a puzzle, you've got uh, the easy, easiest way to uh, build a puzzle is you always start on the outside edges because those are the easy ones to find the square corners, you know, without the, the, the jagged pieces. We have the outside of the puzzle finished. We have the city uh, buying the property. We have the city investing in the infrastructure. We have the Blue Harbor, and we have the city building the convention center. Our corners are done. We're filling in the puzzle, but there's still a lot of work to be done, and the Edson is a big part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Ratke, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. You said it earlier. We need to look to the future. Economic development is happening. Spaceport Sheboygan is not just a tourism attraction. Spaceport Sheboygan is our future. We see the University of Wisconsin expanding the science centers out there. Lakeland College expanding their centers. Why? Because we need the technology to keep the city moving. That's where the future is in Sheboygan, is the technology sector. I keep hearing from people, industry, industry, that's what we need. Well, industry as Sheboygan knows it is gone. It's not coming back. It's, it's no mystery, folks. Little by little, those jobs are going on a slow boat to China. And I mean it literally. Um, but right now, as we look to the future, Spaceport Sheboygan is where it's at. Not just for the tourism dollars, but for the type of people it's going to bring here and for the investment these various foundations have put into our educational structure here in the community to educate our citizens and those that choose to come here for their education on how to further the technologies that took us off this earth and to the moon in 1969. Um, I'm afraid that a destroyer from Vietnam era is not going to do what Spaceport Sheboygan can. You talk about the businesses in the South Pier District. We see the condos going up. We need to put people in those businesses and in those condos and put uh, residents in the city and let the city grow. A ship isn't going to do it, but Spaceport will. Spaceport has got the educational opportunities for every one of us in this community. The technologies gained just simply by going to the moon back in the 60s are things we take for granted to this day. And we need to move forward with the Spaceport Project and make sure that that can go forward. And the Edson is not, not part of that uh, scenario. I'm going to support uh, the Spaceport Project as I have I told these men personally and whatever I can do here at City Hall to help them. As far as the Edson is concerned, I'm not going to change my vote this evening. I'm going to vote against the lease. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Retke. Alderman Hanna, you're next. No, oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, got lots of feedback from, from people on both sides of the issue. Um, and I think you both made some very good points. I, too, am a big believer in the spaceport. I'm on the Governor's Aerospace Commission, uh, supporting it with my time, effort, and obviously I'll support it with my money. The Edson represents, to me tonight, just an opportunity for them to explore. I think it's a very much of a long shot. Um, I don't think I want to stand in their way of letting them uh, look at resources and see what they can do. And, and I, don't, I don't see the projects by any means as mutually exclusive. I see a lot of complementary factors to it. We can deal with the logistics of the parking. I think that will be an issue, but it's something we need to address. And, and something struck me, one of the aldermen saying, what sort of person would be attracted to the ship and perhaps attracted to the space port? My stepfather was a, was a pilot in the Navy and a graduate of Annapolis. And in the 1950s, he was a test pilot and was very involved in, early on in, the, in the, uh, the development of jet, jet engine aircraft for the Navy. He would have been the type of person that would have enjoyed both. And there's lots of people that would come and enjoy both. And I think right now we're just giving people the opportunity to see. They may very well come back to us and say the resources aren't there. Come back to us and say the Corps of Engineers can't support redeveloping the Pier District. Uh, so that's really where I stand and, and very much behind uh, the spaceport, but don't see it in competition with the ship. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Matty, you're next, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the issue as I see it is an issue of finance. And the question is, can both entities, as they attempt to raise money, be successful? 
So for me, we haven't had that conversation. I think we need to have that conversation. They might be tapping distinctly different groups of people for funding, but there might be significant overlap because that issue has not been addressed and cannot be addressed here adequately tonight. I move to refer this to Committee of the Whole, inviting both parties to be present to have that conversation. Second. Motion and second to refer back to Committee of the Whole. On the referral, please call the roll. <clears throat> Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Boren? No. Berg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Three ayes, ten noes. Motion fails. We will continue with the discussion on. I'm sorry, it's three ayes. <laughs> And 12 no's. I'm sorry. Yes, I understood. <laughs> I knew you did. <laughs> I was actually counting. <laughs> That's good. We will continue with the discussion of putting the resolution upon its passage as amended. We still have some lights blinking here. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I too do not believe that the Edson actually fits down at the Blue Harbor area. Um, and I also have concerns with a city in Michigan that has been trying to get this ship there for the last few years. And I don't understand why we as a city would take this away from another city that has been working hard and has raised a few million dollars already in obtaining this ship. I think it's wrong for us to do this. And as far as fitting in down at you know, the piece of the puzzle, I don't believe that this ship was in the original plan for that South Pier district. So I don't think this is a piece to any puzzle down there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. President Berg, you're next, sir. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, fortunately, rather than talking about synergism between projects, we're talking about incompatibility. And I guess I don't see that there is an incompatibility between these two projects. Uh, one of the things we haven't talked about, and it's often difficult to talk about, is uh, things called patriotism. Uh, today was a good day. The flag was flying at full staff from City Hall. That meant that a Wisconsin soldier did not die. That a family did not receive a folded flag with the word on behalf of a grateful nation. We sit up here tonight as a legislature. The events of the last century of the last several centuries serve as a backdrop and a reminder of the price that has been paid over those centuries to allow folks like us to gather in chambers like this to do the people's business in a peaceful and democratic manner. Is there a tie-in with Sheboygan? <coughs> Military service has a tie-in with every community. For every community has a flag at half mass someplace in the United States. I was in the infantry. We did not have a lot of artifacts, an M16, a steel pot, a pair of jungle boots, the occasional Huey helicopter, an APC, and if we were lucky, somebody might have had a Playboy magazine. We had very few artifacts. Veterans of my era very rarely roll themselves in the flag, especially when it comes to combat veterans. But we need to provide and enhance the opportunity for our students to get a sense of the sacrifice, hardship, and also the opportunity that military service brings. We also need to give them the opportunity to hear those stories of patriotism from the individuals who served. And where else could an old man like myself take my grandchildren? to talk about what life was like as a 27-year-old platoon leader, taking over a platoon from Lieutenant Stephen Dolan, killed, awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's the connection. Thank you. Thank you, President Berg. Alderman Ryan, second time, sir. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I commend Alderman Byrd in his uh, honesty. Why do we want to take this ship away from Saginaw? That's a simple question to answer. We're Sheboygan. We're not Saginaw. We don't live in Saginaw. We want this ship for Sheboygan. We want this ship for Wisconsin. We want this ship for our citizens. As Alderperson Berg has said, Alderman Berg, President Berg has said, um, this is more than a tourist attraction. This is a memorial. And I think uh, that we should, we should be honored to have this memorial in Sheboygan. It will draw a different type of person than the spaceport, I believe, and probably some of the same people. Um, but I, I believe as a memorial and as a tourist attraction, it can be nothing but good for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Next we have Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Tonight really is a great night. I mean, what other city in Wisconsin can say, well, we're arguing what we should approve, NASA or Navy, what should we do first? It's, it's really amazing to me. But uh, I was against this mostly because of parking. And, and I was looking at it, and then I started problem solving. I started thinking, well, what, what else can we do? How else can we do it? The, the sport would be a great thing. Would we be able to do it? And as Alderman Ryan mentioned, we have roadways, and there's different roads there. But what we're missing is we have waterways. And if you, if you go in uh, to Wisconsin Dells or other tourist sites in the state or in the country, half of the experience is getting there. They, uh, they, at the Camila Hall meeting, they mentioned the water taxi. And we can use the water taxi to, uh, to access the boat. And there's just so many other ways we can get there using the waterways that we have. I feel at this point we need to explore bringing that in here with an open mind. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. And Alderman, just bear with me. We've got lots of lights blinking. Alderman Boren, second time, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to continue to support this agreement with uh, some trepidation, but I, I think we had a good agreement to begin with, and I think we improved, improved this uh, agreement tonight with, the, uh, with what we just passed a few minutes ago. I've had a lot of calls about this over the weekend. Uh, I even had people talk to me before and after church yesterday, which is very unusual. But uh, I've reassured my constituents that this is just the beginning. As Alderman Hanna said, this is a stepping stone. And the Winsa people have a lot of hoops to go through. They have to do that parking study. They have to deal with the dredging down there. That, that in itself may be an insurmountable problem but let's at least find out about it. Uh, if I'm on the council when, when Winsa goes through all the hoops, I'm going to look at that next agreement just as hard as I did with this one, and it's going to have to be, as, in my opinion, as ironclad as this one for me to support it then. But I will support this document tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Next we have Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just, my comment is that, um, from the Committee of the Whole meeting last week, uh, the gentleman who spoke from the Rockets for School program, he, he made a statement that was so refreshing to me and that it was that he said, I think we can work along with the Winsa people. And, and I, I did, I thought that was just wonderful to hear we can work along with people. And, and I'm wondering, and I know that the Winsa people would be more than willing to work along with the spaceport people. I think we should all work together to try and, and make everything uh, uh, to work down there. And I think they'd be willing to do that. And um, that's, that, that's how I see it, too. Thank, Thank you, you. Alderman Kittleson. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, tonight, in your own words, you had mentioned the importance of economic development. And this project is one um, that would fall into that category. And to allow, they say the best, um, the best way to advertise is word of mouth. And I think it would say much about this city in terms of giving everybody an equal opportunity if we allow this project just to be looked at. Um, some of the concerns that were addressed tonight is, is something that we're going to look at. And if at, at the end of the day it doesn't seem to be a suitable fit, I know there's many hurdles that will still need to be jumped. Um, we can still shake hands and walk away saying that we tried. And I think that's what we can say here, um, is that we're giving every developer an equal opportunity in Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Alderman Susha, second time. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, I guess in my definition of good economic development, there comes with it a, a tax base. And I do appreciate Alderman Bourne's proposal tonight to charge them $5,000 a year rent. But when you're talking about something of this magnitude, um, you know, if, if they were building this on land, they'd be paying, you know, over $100,000 a year. To me, that's what economic development is, is about, is what you're going to do with the tax base so it lowers the property tax for the citizens. Um, I do agree with Alderman Hanna when he said that this is probably a long shot that Windsor would actually be successful in bringing this vote here. Um, but I did receive some questions in the community uh, after the Committee of the Whole meeting. I was unable to attend and I wasn't able to watch it, but I understand there was some discussion that if this vote's not available, that they could bring in a potential different vote. And there has been some issues in regards to is there a bait and switch program going on here? They're presenting us with a, a vessel that's in great shape. And then at the last minute, if it goes to Saginaw, then all of a sudden we're going to wind up with a uh, rusty bucket. And um, I would like uh, City Attorney McLean to address that issue. I talked to him a little bit about before the meeting, and I'd like him to answer that. And then just my last thought on this is that, um, you know, a lot of people also in the community were complaining when Blue Harbor initially went up that that obstructed their view. And, you know, when it's on land, it's kind of hard to give the public an opportunity to decide if a, a private entity wants to build something. But this isn't on land. And perhaps the answer to find out what the citizens really want is that maybe on the spring election we need to have a referendum to find out what the citizens want. Do they want it or not? So if, if City Attorney McLean could just address the issue in regard to this development agreement, I understand that it's, it's specific to the Edson and no other vessel. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if you look at the paragraph number four, contingencies, uh, sub A, this is on page three, the, the first contingency. So this sublease shall further be contingent and transfer of possession of the premises shall occur upon the following. A is transfer of the USS Edson by the Secretary of the Navy to WINSA in accordance with applicable federal law and regulations for the transfer of Navy vessels to nonprofit entities. Uh, doesn't talk about other vessels, it talks about the Edson. That's the contingency. Uh, if that contingency isn't met, then you don't go forward. Now, it's not to say the council couldn't choose to change the deal down the road if you wanted, but the, uh, that's the contingency, and this agreement is transfer of the Edson by the Navy to Winston. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, too, was unavailable to make the, the committee of the whole meeting, but since that meeting, um, I have received a lot of information from uh, my fellow older persons regarding um, what transpired there. And um, I've supported having the Windsor people look at, um, look at this place for, a harbor, for, their, for, their, for their boat to be docked. Excuse me. Um, and uh, I still think it's a good idea. I think, as Alderman Kittleson said, these groups can work together and will be willing to work together to see what can be done. You heard all of, um, former Alderman and uh, present State Representative Terry Van Akron say tonight that they support us moving forward on this and that down the road, if this becomes a reality, they can, we will be able to work with them, to get, with them, the state, to get funds and uh, to maybe get grants and so forth that will help bring this um, uh, to be a true tourist attraction and so forth. And so for those reasons, um, I will continue to support this and see what the Windsor people can do in the time they have available uh, to bring this ship into the Sheboygan Harbor. Thank you, Alderman Graff. we got two more. Alderman Davis, sir. Honorable Mayor, uh, I asked Paul for a question. There's a call in a second uh, to call the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Question has been called. Please call the roll. The motion is to put resolution 1835 upon its passage as amended. And you have the amendments. Please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. No. Ryan. Aye. Susha. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clionis. Aye. 11 eyes, four no's. Motion carries. 1836 lies over. 1837 through 1838 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1839, 
by the Committee of the Whole recommending a favorable recommendation to the agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Windsor for berthing the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move uh, that, th that the RC be accepted and adopted. Motion second to accept and adopt. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One opposition. Meyer. Report of Committee 7, 1840, by the Building Use Committee reporting that Zimmerman Architectural Studios presented the preliminary plan and design for the police station for the police department. Police Department should be police station building and was accepted by the committee and is attached for informational purposes. 1840 Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1841 by the committee of the whole recommending filing resolution to terminate the city's consideration of the proposal to locate the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to adopt, accept and adopt 1841. Please call the rule. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. Twelve ayes, three noes. Motion carries. 1842 by law and licensing recommending filing ordinance creating the Commission on Community Relations at Division 13 of Article 5 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code. Alvin Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the. Uh, to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas. Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 1843 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 1844 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. That document along with 1845, which is, um, which is um, authorizing a transfer of appropriations also in the 2006 budget, I would move that both RCs be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution in 1844 be put upon its passage, and the resolution in 1845 be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Any discussion? Be none. Please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Serta. Aye. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clionis. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 1846 by the Special Committee on Risk Management recommended authorizing the city to enter into contract for obtaining medical stop loss insurance. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the RC be accepted and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I understand the importance of passing this tonight because we do need stop loss insurance in place in January of 2007. I have a simple yes or no question. Did the city send out a request for proposal for stop loss insurance for 2007? I don't know. Rich, Rich, would you please come up to the podium? Question is, uh, Mr. Gephardt, if the uh, city sent out a uh, RFP on the stop loss. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the purchasing agent works with um, Associated Financial. It's been our consultant for um, such areas as to obtain stop loss um, proposals, in which I, and they have provided that for several years. Um, I know you don't all have a copy of this, but this is 
um, multi pages of the proposals that were received. Um, it's either five or six companies that are on here. I can read them off if you like, but uh, the it's a coordination between the purchasing agent and uh, Jay Scott of Associated Financial to obtain these proposals, as they have in previous years. Alderman um, Susha, you have a follow-up question? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. So the answer is no, the city did not do a request for proposal. We just did what Yes, the city before. has through their consultant, Jay Scott of Associated Financial. And then did he publish that publicly for everyone, or did he hand-select which ones he went to? He went to the insurance companies, so I'm not sure what you mean by publishing. Like he, went, he knows the contacts to the insurance companies. I can read off the companies or major companies. I uh, just want to know if all, the, all of the insurance providers in the city of Sheboygan were given the opportunity to bid on it. That's really what I'm questioning. Well, these are not, you know, the only insurance company we really have any size here is Acuity, and I don't think they have this type of coverage. They're not in, in this line of coverage. You're working with companies of ING, Standard Security, American General, American National, uh, Orion. Uh, you know, these are major international companies. They're not just local Sheboygan brokers. Uh, you know, if you wish to talk about whether or not we should be with Associated Financial versus some other consultant, that's a different question. Mm -hmm. But a consultant isn't the insurance company. A consultant ties their clients to the companies. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Alderman Barney. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I have a couple questions on this. I hope somebody here can answer them. Uh, what is the amount, uh, what is the stop loss amount? And if, if I understand what stop loss is, I believe that's where the exposure from the employee stops and where the major medical kicks in. And my second question is, is that is this put, uh, having the stop loss coverage, is this eventually going to save us some money on what we're paying for health insurance or is it just, uh, just an additional benefit that's good to have? Thank you. Uh, the stop loss uh, term for what is being proposed here is 125000 on the specific. That means if any individual and their total claims in a given year, including prescriptions, exceed 125000 the insurance company will, will pay beyond that. Um, we, as you know, are self-insured. This is our one layer of insurance protection it is for catastrophic type claims. Uh, f so we have a specific. We also have part of this is, is the aggregate, which means if our total claims went extremely high, there also is a layer of insurance for us uh, for that protection also. But uh, we also took uh, quotations at 150000 um, but it was recommended to remain at the 125,000 specific. If I could just follow up, please. Uh, so, in other words, uh, the first 125,000 dollars per person would be under our self-insurance. Anything above that would be major medical. Is that what you're saying? It would, it would be under the stop loss. Under the stop loss. I'm sorry. Yes. No. Yeah. And is this is this uh, having this stop loss coverage? Is this a potential for us for some savings in our? Premiums. It's obviously it's risk shifting to the insurance company for the catastrophic claims. Uh, this year we've had I think seven that have exceeded 125,000, and uh, I think we will be recovering more than what we're paying in premium in this year, um, so which make and it's also with ING for 2006. So um, I think, in my opinion, this is pleasant to see this renewal coming from them because before we had um, a different company and when our claims went high their uh, quotation went extremely high. Thank you. Thank you Alderman Bourne. We have one more Alderman Hanna. Do you have a question for Mr. Gephardt? Please do. Sure. I think that, uh, thank you Rich, your explanation was, was very good. I think the opportunity for us to, to save money in a situation like this is when we do collect the bids on that stop loss, it's it's a competitive bidding situation. That's where we really need to to look carefully and see what the market is um, for that, because the, the savings comes. That stop loss policy is a commodity, and so we're trying to find the lowest bid on that commodity. That's where the savings comes from. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. The motion is to accept and adopt 1846 and put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Meyer. 
Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warren. Aye. Berg. Serta. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1847 through 1849 to be referred. Matters laid over. 1763, resolution number 1850607 by Alderman Ryan, approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease and contract for lease of land between the Redevelopment Authority and the New Horizon Investments Incorporated. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Okay. I will refer to it. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to uh, point out to the council that there are revised documents on your desks. Uh, the changes are more or less superficial. The, the, the name of the developer was changed. I believe I mentioned this a uh, couple of council meetings ago, but uh, it was originally New Horizon Investments, Inc. Uh, the, the owners tried to get that name uh, registered with the Secretary of State, and they came back and said that's too similar to other corporations that would perhaps uh, appear confusing to individuals. So they changed the name to New Horizon Development of Sheboygan, Inc. Um, the, the exhibit A's on the two documents are, are filled in. The, originally, we were looking at the lot, a uh, part of lot five of South Pier. Uh, the, the property that's being leased, or would be leased uh, once the ground lease is entered into, is part of lot four, so it's a little to the west, uh, farther to the west on the south pier, still along the river. Uh, there was one uh, clerical error corrected that where the number reflected uh, $1.2 million in investment, but the, but the uh, the text just referenced the 200,000, so the million was added to the million 200,000. Uh, other than that, it's really no, no change in the agreement. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Ryan, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a, uh, a great example of uh, development in the South Pier District. This is, uh, these are local Sheboygan investors, longtime Sheboygan residents that are investing a minimum of $1.2 million into the South Pier District. It's, uh, it's the future of Sheboygan. It's a good thing. Thank you. Good point. Thank you very much, Alderman Ryan. Okay, we are going to call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 1757. Uh, general Ordinance Number 540607 by Alderman Meyer, designating certain city-owned lands for park purposes as part of Elwood H. May Environmental Park, and 1758 does doing the same thing for park purposes as part of Evergreen Park. Alderman Meyer, both. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the general ordinances be put upon their passage. Motion and second. Any discussion? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, um, this is. Um, areas on uh, Maywood area and the Evergreen Park area and there were parts of city land scattered in between these two parks and what we have done now is we have taken the city land and we have designated it park land guaranteeing that there will no longer be a Taylor Drive extension running through there or any other kind of building in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? <coughs> Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1765, General Ordinance Number 560607 by, by Alderman Vanderweel, Serta, Meyer, Montemayor, and Berg relating to no parking areas to move a no parking anytime zone on the south side of Grand Avenue. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to uh, put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. 
Motion and second. Under discussion? There being none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? I'm sorry. He's gone. <laughs> uh, Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clionis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Ratsy? 15 eyes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Uh, maybe you can help me. 1764, was that addressed already? I know it's going for the next time. Okay. 1764. What are you looking at? Still have that on the That's going for next time, it's Steve, because it wasn't on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. So it's not. We'll, no. We'll wait, we'll wait on right. that. 1764. Yes, Your Honor. It is a uh, resolution authorizing the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations to negotiate over. settlement of insurance claims not to exceed 15000 without prior approval from the Risk Management Committee of the Common Council. That lies over. Uh, 1850 is a communication from Michael Clark, 2130 North 28th Street, regarding a situation with a stray pit bull pacing in front and back of their home and wanting clarification as to the role of the police department regarding public safety with this issue. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1851 is a communication from Diane Weber, 5025 White Fox Drive, disputing an amount of a special assessment they paid when they purchased the property. That will be referred to Finance Committee. 1852 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1853 is a resolution directing the Department of Public Works to post various alleys along the south side of Michigan Avenue as no parking in alley as listed below. And it lists uh, south alleys in the 800, 900, 100, 1100, and 1300 blocks of Michigan Avenue. That will lie over. 1854 is a resolution directing the Department of Public Works to post a no parking here to corner sign along the west side of North 10th Street, 15 feet south of the south edge of the crosswalk at Michigan Avenue. That will lie over. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.